Greetings and salutations. I'm America's R&B historian, Tyrone Dubois. And my friends, you're watching the one, the only, The Cindy Davis Show. of the Cindy Davis Show. My guest today can sing anything from classical to gospel. No one puts the soul in soul music like Latrice. Welcome to the show, Enthrone Records recording artist, multi-talented actress, singer, and songwriter, Miss Latrice Lawrence. Hello, lady. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Well, I want to welcome you to Cindy Davis Show, and um, I, I just, I just want to say, how have you been doing throughout this pandemic, though? Huh? How have you been doing throughout this pandemic? You know what? I really have to say, God has really been good because I was mm -hmm. able to um, went go and work with Andre Pittman, and we got a, we got a distribution deal last year through yeah. universal music group and oh. we were able to um we were able to um actually get a bma last year in november november 8th okay. and i'm really grateful for that so we got the bma was able to get moonlight chaser and lonely out on this collaboration album called raindrops loves holidays volume two yeah. and you know it was just really great now, even oh, though I had to perform from home, the thing that was great about it was uh -huh. that I performed from home. Mm -hmm. I turned my dining room into a stage yeah. and uh, my curtain was literally like a stage curtain. <laughs> I put lights on it and yeah. I made it interesting. And, you know, yeah. I learned how to, you know, video myself mm -hmm. and I learned how to do lighting <laughs> and I already did my own makeup. So... Yeah. I pretty much learned how to just do shows here at the house. Sounds like you've been staying busy, and I want to <laughs> say congratulations to all of your success. With Thank you. Your, Thank you. Uh, with your new music yes. and, and everything. You have a quite an impressive resume, by the way, too. Uh, you've worked with Barbara Streisand, um, Earth, Wind & Fire, and uh, you were named uh, New Artist of 2020. Yes. Wow. wow. How did how did that make you feel? Well, when Central Stars called me and they said they were honoring, they first of all, they had me to sing. And the crazy part is that I thought I was just singing. <laughs> and they were honoring Ty, Ty, uh, Tyrone Dubois, uh -huh. who's a good friend of mine. And he's, you know, of course, he has the, the golden voice, <laughs> you, know, you know, the golden voice that represents the world, you know. And he's fought cancer and overcome cancer just like I have. So we're really good friends. And so when they called me up, I was tearful because I wasn't ready for that. And then he told his story and I got tearful then too. Wow. And then I sang, um, I sang this song, I'm Still Here by Dorinda Clark Cole. And uh, I told a little bit of my cancer story. So we were all crying, the women, the men, we were all crying. So wow. it was wonderful. You also sing classical music, is that right? Yes, I sing opera. I've been singing classical for um, 31 years. Wow. And I was trained 26 years. And I worked with Dr. Carl Snyder, but I've also worked with Dr. Joyce um, Sweeney. Mm -hmm. And they were the best. They bring the best out of people. Yeah. They were trained for very, you know, very efficiently and, um, I just feel grateful because people like um, Leontine Price, Kathleen Battle, um, you know, Maria Callas, you know, people of that nature really have touched my life. And especially Leontine, she's my favorite uh, classical artist. What does she and, teach you? 
What did, huh? she, teach you? What did she teach you? Oh, grace, poise. Mm -hmm. um, her phrasing was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was beautiful, of course. Mm -hmm. But her voice was so powerful. Mm -hmm. And her, her, the way she attacked languages, I just loved it. And I got a chance to see her at her retirement recital mm -hmm. in 1993. And they, we were able to actually go behind the stage and meet her. And the thing is, the woman is so, I mean, she's just so elegant. Yeah. And I mean, and now she's like uh, 93 years old. Wow. And I, I, it's a blessing that she's still here with us. But she has been an integral part of the classical world. Mm -hmm. Her and, and so many others, Jesse Norman, I love her too. Yeah. But I think Leontine is my absolute favorite. I have to say she is. Who is one of your favorite rhythm and blues artists? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 well, you know that, okay, Whitney, she started out doing pop. Yeah. But she did R&B too. Uh -huh. I have to say that Whitney... And uh, Mariah Carey, but my ultimate is Minnie Riperton. Minnie oh. Riperton and Denise Williams because yeah. of the upper register, and I'm more of a lyric soprano, more more of a uh, color tour, but oh. I'm more of a lyric soprano, even though I have a husky voice. I sing oh. alto, but I'm more of a of a oh. lyric soprano. And I would, I would not have guessed that you were a lyric soprano. Right, right. Also, yeah, maybe. Take yes. So, so. But classically, definitely, um, definitely a color tour. And I am a soprano. I sing alto as well. Now, when I sing Taking It Back, that's in my alto voice. And I go to my head voice at times. But, you know, that's, I say that that's the anthem song for COVID. Let me, let me, let me ask you about the head voice. How do you go into your head voice? What is an example of head voice? Okay. An example of head voice is something like, <laughs> you know, something like that. Oh. But my chest voice is, one thing I can use to be lonely. That's my chest voice. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's different. Amazing. So uh, yeah. that song, I Refuse to Be Lonely, is my absolute favorite song by uh, Phyllis Hyman. Phyllis Hyman yeah. is probably, oh my God, her and Vesta, to me, they were so passionate. So I would say that they're my favorites too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're my favorites yeah. too. Definitely Phyllis's phrasing and her ability to go from her head to chest and yeah. chest to head. I I really think that's an important technique. So that's one thing that I I like to do. I like wow. to do that. Wow. So, so yeah. where are you from though, by the way? Okay, I'm from LA. Oh, but I'm from LA. Oh, okay. Yeah, but my mom is from Mississippi. Uh -huh. So okay. I have a little bit of that Mississippi draw because of her. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So I, was just, I was just curious for, you know, what was it like growing up in L.A.? Oh, my. Well, everything was fast paced. I bet. And I, I attended um, Dublin Elementary School. I did a lot of singing there. You know, a lot of since I was eight, I would do plays and shows and, you know, all that. And um, I played the piano. I uh, had classical piano lessons from six on. And then my dad was... Um, he was a reti retired airman. You know, he was retired. Um, he was a serviceman, oh. and he worked for the post office for thirty-one years. Oh, okay. My mom worked for the post office, and she decided okay. to be a mom and work at the schools that we were at, so she could watch us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she was a home mom. So she would oh. bring us lunch to school and all that. So I was there. I went to Transfiguration yeah. um, Elementary Schools, Catholic school, right across oh. the street from my house. Oh, and we wow. live in the Lamert Park area in a very beautiful uh, four bedroom home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, I also attended St. Mary's Academy High School and Mount St. Mary's College. So I went to Catholic school pretty much my whole life. Mm 
Wow. And um, but LA is very fast paced. Yeah. And okay. I, as I've gotten older, I have slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> so I like quiet. So I live in yeah. Wilmington, close to Torrance now. But I like quiet opposed to, you know, fast paced. Yeah, exactly. And LA is very no noisy, I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> and we always have something going. But lots of people like to come here like they do in New yeah. York. Yeah. I've traveled all over the world and um and I have gone to different places singing and I've gone to um I've gone to the Netherlands and sang at the De Spiegel mm -hmm. uh, auditorium and also I was planning to go to Greece before, you know, the pandemic hit. And so wow. I was very disappointed about that. And I was supposed to go to Carnegie Hall, which is one of my dreams, oh, you wow. know. So, and, you know, it's okay. This is what I tell everybody. We're going to do it. We're just on a, um, a pause right now. God put yeah. us on a pause for a reason. Yeah, I think we were put on a pause so we could take a breath and start again because a lot of us were doing way too much. I know I was. Yeah. And you know nonstop. Said, right. <laughs> yes, nonstop. Yeah. So this has been a, a time of reflection, mm -hmm. a time of prayer, yes. a time of renewal. When um I wrote Taking It Back with Devin Shaw, we were talking about taking back our power, taking okay. back our voice, taking back back our voting, taking back equality, taking back uh, health, because so many people were killed and, and so many people were suffering from COVID. I see. Yeah. And um, that's pretty much why we rewrote Taking It Back. Well, so to I think it it's out very now, fitting. Huh? It's very fitting. Thank you. Yeah. So take so having it out now yeah. and being with Enthroned yeah. Records and being with Andre Pittman has been refreshing and he's been a friend of mine and he's worked with me with this music thing since 2014 and he's just a great guy we met actually um we had a gig with giovanni not uh -huh. giovanni we had a gig with ariella a singer and uh with kjlh and we did we sung backgrounds for her in 2013 okay. so he said you're a solo artist. You need yeah. to be heard more as a solo artist. And he got on my career. Mm -hmm. I just started doing KJLA stuff and different things. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are now. And he's three and a half years into his label in Throne Records. Yeah. And this is the second distribution deal, this time with the UK. Wow. So my music hit the UK May 22nd. Mm -hmm. my birthday and oh. now it's in LA and Amazing. people are loving the song because people need something positive for this time. Yeah. What is your method for writing music? It does the music come first or the lyrics? You know, usually my um, producers pitch a track to me mm -hmm. and then um, I listen to it. Mm -hmm. And if I gel to it, sometimes I just start writing a song. It just flows. It just goes in. Right. And and then sometimes they decide to write with me, which is fun because yeah. we laugh and we're coming up with lyrics and trying to, you know, come up with the right rhyme, rhyme scheme and whatever. And we go through all these. We, we have a good time in the studio. We have fun. But my inspiration, sometimes I hear a song, a track, or we are creating a track together because I do that, mm -hmm. too. I create tracks, too, with them. Um and it's like, I'll get a, a feeling or a vibe from a song. And then we yeah. just get a theme together and we just start brainstorming. Or I'll just go home and brainstorm and do it myself. It just depends on the song. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah. Um, what do you think you would be doing had you not taken this music path? Do you think music chose you? Uh, so that's a two-fold yeah. question. <laughs> I think music chose me <laughs> and um, if I wouldn't have been doing it, I would have been an interior decorator oh. or, or something like that. Something or a teacher. With the because, yeah, because I was a teacher before. I was a teacher oh. before. Oh, so okay. I would have, 
all subjects. And then I taught sixth grade. I taught oh. music to uh, to twelfth, ninth through twelfth grade. Amazing. But I taught all subjects to kindergartners, and I, I taught all subjects to sixth graders. Do you still get stage fright? Yes. Mm. <laughs> and the thing that <laughs> gives me comfort it? is that Barbara Streisand. She yeah. has stage fright, and so does Gladys Knight. Oh, and wow. she told us about, a little bit about that when I sang backgrounds for her in 2000 um, at the Timeless tour. And this was Barbara Streisand, Staples, right? Staples Center. Yeah, she was cool. Oh, and wow. she was very, she didn't play, but she was okay. so professional. Yeah. And when I say that John Travolta and his wife Kelly, uh, Sidney Poitier, um, Elizabeth Taylor was in the front row, girl. So they went backstage and met us, and I was like, oh. I mean, I think I, I, did, I died when I saw Elizabeth Taylor and when I saw City Podier. But when I saw that big, tall John Travolta walking towards me, I was like, <laughs> oh, oh my god, oh my god! And I had to take, I had to play it off completely. And he walked wow. up to me, hi, what's your name? I was like, my name is Latrice. I was like, I've loved you ever since I was a child. Wow. And he hugged me. He's so wow. adorable. He's a not only breathtakingly beautiful man, but sweet. Yeah. And Kelly, I'm so sad he lost his wife. She was like a lantern, like a light bulb. Mm -hmm. I, I just never met anybody like that before. You know, when you meet a person and you just yeah. they imprint in your life and you their, their soul is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Her soul was beautiful. Wow. And um, that was a great opportunity. And I sang with my friend Alicia Riley for this tour and then an, uh, some other people as well. And I have to say that that was an incredible experience. Wow. Incredible. That's the way I was when I met the Harry Belafonte. I never thought I would meet. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, God. A that's a Belafonte. legend. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a legend, girl. <laughs> Yeah, he is Sydney Poitier. <laughs> what made me think about it when you said Sydney Poitier? I was like, oh, yeah, that's man. why I said I, I, I guessed. I guessed yeah, literally because I was like, oh. I mean, I mean, that was the first night. Yeah. I mean, the second night was Jack Nicholson and some other people. I, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah. what? Wow. But people love Barbara. People yeah. love Barbara. She Barbara's wow. big. Yeah, she is. She is, and she's been in the amazing. business forever. She's been in the business for years. I love her. I love her. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love her music. Speaking of Barbara, you are um, going to do uh, like a Facebook Live concert, and uh, is one oh. of those Evergreen going to be? You've been doing your homework. Yeah. Oh, course, sweetheart. <laughs> Yes, I am. That's yeah. one of my favorite songs, actually. Oh, oh, I love her. I, mm -hmm. oh, that, that is one. That is one. That is favorite. one of my favorite. It's just uh, mm -hmm. one of those songs that it's like you see the leaves blowing when you see yeah. it in the wind. It's just so refreshing, refreshing you know. Refreshing and calm. Yeah, it's so wonderful. It just gives you a wonderful feeling all over. Just makes me feel right. so good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask if you could give us a little tidbit of what you're going to be doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe, okay. You know, no, whatever you see. want to, uh, whatever you want to share right now. Um, it could be evergreen or it could be, you know, something from um, your album or maybe both. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what I got. Let's see what okay. I got. Okay. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. To sing it a cappella too. Well, you really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, what about maybe two or three bars? You don't have to do the whole song. Okay. Love, soft as an easy chair. Love, soft as the morning air. Love. No that is shared by two I have found in you. Okay, let's see. I can do it. Yes, okay, yes. Yeah. See how you put the soul in the, the you 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 make it soulful, you know? It's you put the soul <laughs> in everything, girl. Girl, but my part is 
You and I will make each and that of us. Yes. Every day a beginning. Mm -hmm. Spirits arise. And a love that's a rehearsed. Yes. Fear and excitement. We can have a day better. Bravo. Bravo. Beautiful. Beautiful. And let's see. Um, There's another song that I sing. Um, it's called, you ever heard of Come Sunday? Um, yeah, I think so. Like Duke Ellington. Oh, it's been a while. Lord, dear Lord above, God of mercy and of love, please, please come shine your light on me. Yes, yes. I believe in God put sun and moon up in the skies. I do mind the gray skies cause they're just clouds passing by. Lord, dear Lord above, God of mercy, God of love. Come Sunday, oh, come Sunday, that's the day. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful voice. Wow. Thank you. Wow, Thank you. that is just amazing. Thank you. What do you want people to know about you, your fans? <laughs> what I want people to know is that I sing from my heart. Yeah. And even though you get paid in a profession like this, it's really about singing to people's soul. You don't know who is sad and perhaps thinking about committing suicide. You don't know if a person just lost their parent yeah. and they feel alone or they've gotten a divorce. And sometimes right at the very moment when you sing to them, yeah. you're singing to their very soul. And that's what's important to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what I got in this for. When I was a little kid, I sang because it made me happy. Yeah. I sang because it made other people smile. Mm -hmm. and, and I haven't stopped since then. You know, it's been a passion of mine ever since, you know? Yeah. And I've had so many good people to look up to, like Wayne Team Price and... Um, Jesse Norman and, and, and Whitney and, and all these great people, many Riverton and wow. I've had Vesta and, you know, Phyllis Hyman. Mm -hmm. And I just like to ask that you guys appreciate musicians and singers mm -hmm. because Phyllis started getting older. Mm -hmm. She gained weight. The record company dropped her. Mm -hmm. The love of her life dropped her and she killed herself. Yeah. So there's so lots of musicians that don't feel appreciated. They feel underappreciated. Mm -hmm. So go out and support some people and download their music. Right now, even if it's just downloading their music and sharing their music to other people's pages, yeah. bless other people with the legacy that they've left or the legacy that they're building. That's what I would love to share with you guys, you know, and go out and download Taking It Back. <laughs> I throw that in. <laughs> Taking it back. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing with us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, talking with you, and uh, just just fellowshipping with you. It's just it's just been a, a real blessing. I'm honored, Dr. Cindy. You've been a blessing to me today, yeah. and I'm really glad that I was able to come on your show. And yeah. you know, I was looking at your 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 show and your page. And you really are blessing us, entertainers and, and entrepreneurs that's out there. So thank you very much for having me. You are so very welcome. You are so very welcome. Thank and I you. I just want to say thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, this is Cindy Davis of the Cindy Davis Show. God bless you. <laughs>